So this is actually like a really nice point cloud. We can see all the details here that we get. We can see we get some um, we get some outlines here in the background because it can't really see those points. So those are occlusions from our camera. But we can see all the points here that the camera is actually like able to see. It's, it gets really nice details. We can even see here at the neck, we have these really nice like round uh, points here. So the details here in the point cloud are really great. Hey guys, I'm welcome to the video on this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, we're going to create point clouds with the webcam and also by using deep learning. So in the last video, we used something called the Midas Neural Network Architecture for doing depth estimation with a monocular camera. So we used that to actually like get some depth information with only a monocular camera. It's really nice results that we get. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that out because we're going to use it throughout this video here. And now we're just going to use that depth map to create a point cloud that we're going to visualize with Open3D. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, chess, broad computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can all become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small amount of fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out and give you some guidance in, in some of your own projects. If you, for example, have some problems, I can help you out, give you some guidance. So thank you guys. So we're just going to jump straight into Visual Studio Code here. I'm going to go over the, the code here line by line. Everything, all the code, the whole script here will be down in the description to my GitHub link. You just go into my GitHub, take the code, run it by yourself and create your own point clouds with your own camera. But first of all here, we're going to import the different kind of modules that we need. So we need OpenCV, we need Torch and also time. So we can time how many frames per second do we get when we are running on and uh, passing our image through our, our Midas neural network. And then we're also going to import NumPy. So first of all here we need to set up our Q matrix because when we're actually like going to reproject or like project our 2D points, image points out into the 3D world, when we're going to create our point clouds with only a monocular camera, we actually like need this projection matrix uh, or like our Q matrix for our stereo vision. So in this video here, we're just going to use a monocular camera. So I'm just going to specify these things here for our Q matrix. If, you, if you're creating your depth maps with a, with a stereo, uh, stereo camera or you just want to have a stereo camera, you want the exact same parameters or like you need your own parameters for your own camera, you can just go into ca uh, calibrate your uh, stereo camera and then you can get the, the Q matrix from the stereo rectify function as I've shown in the previous videos throughout the computer vision tutorial where we did the stereo, stereo vision camera calibration and so on. So this video here, we're just going to pass in the values here for our Q matrix. So these are the optical optical center values for the x coordinate and also the y coordinate and then we have the focal length here of our camera and then down here we actually have our baseline which is nine centimeters away from each other we're just going to have some arbitrary numbers here because we're now using a monocular camera instead of a of a stereo vision camera here but we, we need to specify the q matrix here because we want to use this the function from OpenCV to actually like generate and create our 3d world points from our image together with our depth then the last year is actually just a zero here as well. It should be if there's some disparity here between the optical center in the X direction of our cameras. Here down here, we're going to specify the different kind of models that we can use. So th these lines of code are exactly the same as in the last video. So definitely go check that out. So we can, ch we can choose between three different kind of models, the nearest and the latest state of the art models that we can use is these large and hybrid models. And they're based on these dense prediction transformers. So they're actually using the state of the art architectures which is transformers uh they're really good really high accuracy and we can you see if we use the largest model we have the highest accuracy but we also have the slowest inference time it doesn't really matter when we're just going to create a point cloud now from a depth map so we just want the highest accuracy and also we don't really care about the inference speed if you want uh, a bit less accuracy here we can go with the hybrid model it's, it's medium accuracy and also medium inference time if we want the lowest accuracy but we want really high inference time we should go with the meta small model here which is actually like the version 2.1 that we already have made videos about here on the channel as well so this small model here is based on old 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 fashioned um old fashioned convolutional networks these two other models here are based on transformers so down here we can just load in our model so we're just going to enter torch.hop.load so we basically just go into intel's github here and then we're just going to clone this repository here for metas and then we're basically just going to import uh, a model type here and then store it in this object or this variable meet us here so basically we have our model now in this variable or in this object and then down here if we have CUDA available and we have a GPU available we're going to use that and if if we don't have it we're just going to use the CPU 
So it will run a, rough, uh, a really, really, really slow if you're using the CPU. I have a GPU here on my computer. It's not really a good one. It's, it's a 1060, but you should definitely go with a GPU if you have that available. Basically just go into PyTorch website and then you just specify that you have a GPU. You install uh, CUDA and CUDA then, and then you can actually just uh, you, you actually just get some lines of code that you just need to pass into your command prompt or your terminal and then it will install uh, PyTorch with GPU support and so on for you. So here we're just going to convert or like we're going to push our model here to our GPU and then we're also going to evaluate our model. So now we're going to load the transformers to different kind of like transforms here to resize and normalize our image. So this is actually just pre-processing of our image before we're going to pass it through the trained Midas neural network. So here we're just going to load these transforms here from the from this GitHub repository here again. If we specify the last model or the hybrid model, we're just going to use the Midas uh, underscore transforms, and then we're going to use the DBT transforms. We'll just store in this variable so we can then use it later on before we pass our image through our neural network. Else, if we're specifying the small model, we're just going to get this small transform here and store it in our transform variable. So this is all we have to do to actually like set up our neural network model that is trying to estimate depth in the image based on only a monocular camera. So it has been trained on like, I think it's 10 different kind of data sets uh, of, of 3D data or like at least depth data. So it's really nice uh, neural network here that we can use with only a monocular camera. So down here, we're going to open up a video capture for our webcam. I have just the index two here. You should definitely go, or you should probably go with index zero if you only have one camera connected to your computer. Um, at the time you're running this script here. Then we have a while loop here. So as long as the webcam is open, we're just going to stay in this in this while loop here. We're going to read in our images from our webcam. Then we're going to store our image in this Im variable. We're going to start a timer so we can actually time how long it takes to do this algorithm or like how long it takes to pass our image through the depth estimation neural network. First of all, we need to convert our color here from BGR to RGB because when we load in our images with OpenCV, it will be in the BGR format. And, we, and 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 uh, our neural network here from Midas is trained on RGB images. So we're going to convert that first of all here. Then we need to apply our input transform. So we're going to do our input pre-processing uh, techniques on our images. So here we're just going to take our, uh, our trans transforms. We're going to pass in our image and then we're just going to put it onto GPU here as well. So now we both have our model and we also have um, our image here or like an image batch here, uh, which is the input to our neural network. We have all of these things here on our GPU and now we can actually like just take uh, a feed forward step in our neural network with our image. So now we have our input batch. We down here, we can do prediction and resize to the original resolution. So we can actually display how is our depth map or what is the output of our neural network. So here it will be our prediction variable. So basically everything here, the whole depth map will be stored in this prediction variable. So basically, we're just going to take our model and then we're just going to pat our, pa pass our input batch through it. So we're just going to do a, a forward pass here of our neural network in our model. Then we get out the prediction here. First of all, we're just specifying here for PyTorch that we don't want to calculate any gradients when we're doing this here because we're not training right now. We're doing inference. So we, want, we, we don't want uh, the gradients here to be updated. We just want to do prediction. And then down here, we can do interpolation to resize to the original resolution. So basically here, our new prediction will just be, we go into torch and then functional, and then we're going to interpolate our image because we're going to resize to the original solution. First of all, we're going to un unsqueeze our prediction. Then we're just going to set the size here equal to our original image size. And then we're going to use by qubit interpolation for this uh, method here. A line corner is equal to false. And then we're just going to squeeze it here at the end. So we get our depth map that we can then uh, convert to NumPy and display here with OpenCV. So then now here we can have our depth map, which is equal to the prediction. We know that our model and our image were on the GPU. So now we want it down to the CPU so we can actually like do processing on it and we can then display it here with OpenCV as well. So we're going to call prediction.cpu and then we're also call, going to call .numpy. So we'll just convert our prediction here onto the CPU and also to our NumPy array. So we can then do operations with that within OpenCV, NumPy and so on and display what is actually like going on. Then we're going to normalize our, our image here uh, from values between zero and one. We're going to use min max normalization here. So all the lowest values will be uh, like the lowest value will be zero and the highest value will be one. So we're just going to normalize our image. So we can actually display what is going on because the depth that we're going to get out from our neural network will just be relative uh, distances in our image because we're using a monocular camera just trained on uh, for uh, like trained on data sets 
I, with a neural network so our outputs will be relative distances or depth in our image so now we actually have our depth map here we can then go down and use the omsv v function as i talked about in the start of this video so we can actually like reproject our image to 3d so now we both have an image and we also have a depth map and now we're going to reproject that out into 3d so we're combining both our 2d values and our our like our image values so we have our x y and now we have our c with the depth as well which will be our depth map and then we also need to specify this q matrix that we specified up in the start we can also set handle missing values so if there's any missing values we can actually like handle that we can also set it equal to false here because we don't really care about uh, missing values in our neural network or like in our point cloud so down, how you, down here, we can get rid of some of the points. So here we're just going to crop our point cloud. So it will actually just display uh, what is in the foreground of our point cloud. Because if we just had like, if it's larger than 0, 0.0, we're just going to get a lot of points also with a lot in the background. So we're just going to set a threshold value here. So if the point or like if depth is, is greater than 0 0.5, we will actually like keep that in our point cloud and save it in our point cloud that we can then use later on to show with OM3D. So then now here we're going to get our colors and also the points in our 3d point so all the output points here that we're going to send out to our point cloud will be the mask here of our 3d point so all the all the all the points here in the foreground we want to use those points and we're just going to specify it in this way here we also need to get the output colors so we want to get we both need to get the point so we need, need to get the x y and the c point and then we also need to get this corresponding color for that exact point and then we're just going to take the original image and then we're just going to take all the values here for the mask map so all the values in the foreground we're going to take the colors of those uh, of those points from our original image here so now we both have our output points and we also have our output colors then we can end our timer calculate the number of frames per seconds that we get and then we're going to convert our image color back here from rgb to bgr so we can actually like display it with the image show function here from omcv so down here we can actually just apply a color map as we did in the last video so we're going to uh, apply this mac mac color map we're going to unnormalize our image so we're going to take our depth map multiply with 255 so we get values between 0 and 255 and we're just going to specify it as an unsigned 8-bit integer and then we're going to apply our magna color map down here so we actually get this nice color map of our depth map uh, and then we're going to put out the text so we get the number of frames per second we're going to show the original image and then we're also going to show the depth map that we created from the Midas neural network architecture if we're at any point here in our while loop as long as our webcam is open if we hit escape on our keyboard it will just go out of the while loop here and then we're going to go down here and create the actual like point clouds so when you hit escape on your keyboard it will take the latest depth map that it, that it, that it calculated or like generated with the neural network and then it's going to create a point cloud from that depth map with the corresponding uh, original image so then now here we have a function to create a point cloud file so here we're just going to specify the points here the colors and also the file file name of our point cloud file so we're going to take the colors we're going to take the vertices here which act like just the points that we calculated with the reprojection uh, image to 3d uh, function then we're going to set up a PLY header here where we can specify some different kind of things so we have the X and then we have the Y and we have the C and then we have the corresponding red, green and blue uh, color channel here. So this is basically all the information that we have about our points. We're going to save that in the PLY format. Then we're going to open up a file here and we're just going to write out to the file. And then we're just basically just going to write out, out a whole point cloud with the corresponding colors for that point cloud. So down here we have an output file equal to point cloud deep learning .plly. So then now here we're just going to create our uh, output here where you're going to call the function where it's passing in the output points and the output colors which we got up here from the output so when we're taking the mask of our 3d points and also our corresponding or like original image so we both get the output points and the output colors of the foreground which has a threshold value or like a depth value higher than 0 0.4 and then we're just going to re release our webcam and then we're going to destroy all the windows so basically now we have everything i'm just going to run the script here it will load in the media neural network from github then it's going to open up these two windows with your original image and also the depth map and then when we hit escape it will save the depth map and also uh, the, all the different kind of like colors for all the individual points so now we can see we get up this depth map we get around two frames per seconds right now even though i'm using the gpu because we're using the largest model we can see we get this really these really nice results even if I move away here from the image, we get really nice depth um, in the background here.
you can see all the different kind of like details here in the candles behind me in the couch and so on so this is actually really nice uh neural network if you want to know more details and see the different kind of other models make sure to check that video out i created with the uh, media neural network in the last video it's here on the channel but here we basically have a depth map of the face here we can see that my face here is in the foreground then we have some values here um, in my shirt here or in my hoodie which is a bit darker which is further away than my head in the image so basically here we're just going to hit escape it will terminate our program and then it's going to create the point cloud and then over here to the left we can actually see it created this point cloud with this format and then we can just get all our values here so we have our x y and our c value and then we have the corresponding rgb values over here to the left up here at the top we can see we get 160,000 points here in our point cloud so it's really really uh, a lot of points that we have in our point cloud even though we only take in the foreground so this is a really high resolution point cloud that we get we can downsample it or we can even like put a higher threshold um here in our program but it's better to just like take all the points then we can also downsample it later on with open 3d so now when we have our point cloud i just want to show you here how we can open it up with um with open 3d and then we can do a different kind of like operations on them as i've been through throughout this tutorial about point clouds and open 3d so basically here we're just going to import all the different kind of things here with open 3d we're just going to hit shift shift enter and run this block of code then down here we can load in a point cloud we're just going to specify the path here to the point cloud so this is the point cloud that i just showed you uh, in the files in visual studio code so this is exactly the point cloud that we just created with the Midas neural network then we're going to print the pcd and we're also going to print uh, our pcd points and then basically we can just go down here use ohm3d.visualization.draw geometries and then we're just going to pass in our point cloud here and then we're going to display uh, the whole point cloud here that we created so here we're opening up the point cloud we can see it's it's it's, it's on the top but we see we get these nice, really nice details we get like really good depth so we can see here my nose eyes and my uh no my no, nose and eyes is in the foreground we can see my ears here is a bit uh, further away from or like a bit deeper in our image uh when relative to my to my nose so this is actually like a really nice point cloud we can see all the details here that we get we can see we get some um, we get some outlines here in the background because it can't really see those points So those are occlusions from our camera, but we can see all the points here that the camera is actually like able to see It's it gets really nice details. We can even see here at the neck. We have these really nice like round uh, Points here. So the details here in the point cloud are really great We can see even if we zoom in uh, further we get this logo here. We have really nice details so this is a fairly dense point cloud here that we get we can filter it we can like downsample it with voxel voxel downsampling and so on but it is really nice accuracy you can play around with it yourself again everything will be on my github so you can just go in there take the code run it by yourself create your own point cloud set your own thresholds and so on so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way I'm called the Ocean Dude in this computer based tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations, camera calibration, how we can use stereo vision to get depth information in our image, and also how we can calibrate stereo vision cameras. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here. Uh, or else I'll just see you next video, guys. Bye for now.